And we're going to focus mostly on uh, Alina's account today, but it's good to um, have Jeff here. We're going to unpack a bit more about Jeff's experience when we get moving to the breakout rooms later, should you come and join us. This is a trailer for our wonderful breakout room. Um, so Alina, so jumping straight in, um, please could you talk us through a bit about how you set up your service, particularly focusing on that the discharge element for the um, for, for pharmacy and how you collaborated closely with other partners in your area, obviously, um, particularly with Jeff. Oh, thanks, Olivia. Um, so what we found was useful to do as the Trust was to initially engage with our community pharmacies before launching here at the Trust. Mm. So we did a community pharmacy engagement event in October last year. And this was delivered to community pharmacists in Wolverhampton that had signed up to the advanced service for smoke cessation. Um, and this was done in collaboration with um, MLSEU and Jeff um, from LPC. Um, now, as you know, Wolverhampton no longer has a commissioned local stop smoking service. So within our trust, we had the cardiac rehab specialist nurses who had embedded the smoke cessation offering within patient care support packages. So we therefore felt it was fitting for the trust to trial the tobacco dependency discharge process with this team following the community pharmacy engagement event in October last year. Yeah. I then began my role in December and reviewed this piloted work um, and reviewed the IT system that we use to refer patients to community mm -hmm. pharmacy and noticed that there was inconsistencies with the acknowledgements of the referrals. So I felt it was important to, to reach out to our patients to see if this was accurate or if it was an error with the system that we were using. Um, and there was variances with their responses. Some had access to support and others had not. Um, so as a trust, we felt it was important to focus on the discharge process before we continued the implementation of the service. So what we did, we began contacting community pharmacies and offered to meet with them face to face with a view to offer additional support. Um, now, once meeting with the pharmacies, we found that they're in various positions. Some were ready to accept, others had many questions about the pathway, about the systems that we were using, some were yet to complete training. So, yeah. so there's many, many issues that, that, that were presented within these meetings. Um, but during these meetings, we were able to resolve some of those issues and, addition, and add additional support and give them guidance um, and, and to provide that, 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 that collaboration between the two of us. Um, and we felt like the meeting of the face-to-face -face with the pharmacies was highly welcomed um, and it led to the formation of effective collaborative relationships. Mm. Um, in addition to this, the relationships um, that we have from Jeff from LPC was extremely important. Um, we as a trust hosted regular meetings and yeah. we had representation from Jeff from LPC. We had Dan from ICB attending um, and a representation from MLSEU, um, as well as us as a trust. Um, and this gave the um, gave us the, the, the forum to, to present the issues that we were faced with and, and offer that additional support. Um, and by working closely with LPC, um, we were able to, to go through these problems together, identify and bridge geographical gaps. Um, and we also thought it was good to provide a newsletter, which Jeff kindly circulates to the community pharmacies with, with information on our implementation process and the service development. Um, and this is sent out quarterly. So spending time developing these relationships, we developed a master list for us to, to use when we're live on the ward so we could map out which, which, which pharmacies we could refer our patients to. Um, but adding to that, it's important to note that we have a large amount of our patients that do live out of area. So it was important for us to understand what that local offering was. Um, so created a master list to ascertain the local offerings. And once again, there was, there was differences between those offerings. Um, so we then began that relationship building with our out of area pharmacies um, and created a master list for, for us to, to link on to when, when following that discharge process. But it's key that the relationship with LPC, ICB and MLC, 
MNSCU were extremely helpful um, with working with community pharmacies. Excellent. Yeah, that's you. You painted a picture of really close collaboration there, as you say, with the, L the LPC, the ICB, all those different stakeholders. Um, that's yeah, really helpful. Thank you. So now you've done all this collaborative work, can you just outline kind of what the service looks like now? You know, how many pharmacies you've engaged and so on. That would be really interesting. Yeah, of course. So just to break down, we, we currently have 17 pharmacies in Wolverhampton that mm -hmm. are accepting referrals. Um, we, we don't have a locally commissioned stop smoking service, so we are heavily reliant on, on those pharmacies um, supporting our patients. And then building on our out of area, we, we have 17 pharmacies in Warsaw, but there's also a local stop smoking service that we can refer to, um, several in Dudley, but we are building on that. Um, right. They've just launched their service um, within their area, so we're working together with that. Um, South Staffordshire, we have about 12, but once again, they, they have a local stop smoking service that we can also refer patients to. Great. OK, that's really interesting to see what, what size you're at, because um, I can see that there's a lot of intensive work as well that you've needed to put in. So, yeah, thanks, Alina. Um, so you was you were telling when we had a conversation before this event, you were saying that you once you done some that background work and engaging the pharmacies and working with Jeff at the LPC you'd you'd set about setting up the hospital team so I wonder whether you could say a little bit about that particularly how how you've set it up to kind of support that discharge process to, to community pharmacies. Yeah brilliant um, so our service consists of um, tobacco dependency leads a nurse specialist and two advisors. Mm -hmm. um, once we did that background work with the pharmacies we were then ready to launch the service mm -hmm. but and having early engagement with our ward pharmacy team was extremely important for us as a service. So we, we completed a presentation and a training session with the, the pharmacy department within the trust to discuss the service in, de in detail prior to the launch, but yeah. also to ensure that there was appropriate NRT supply available. Yes. Um, and also um, that a two week supply of NRT was provided to our patients. And we, we communicate really reg well regularly with our community pharmacy and um, with our internal trust pharmacy team. Um, so at the end of January, we launched um, to our piloted board of cardiology and we've incrementally rolled that out to, to other wards um, in line with our rollout plan. Um, and working with, with key people such as the, the ward prescribers has, has been really helpful for the development. Um, Great. I might just stop you there because I don't. I know that you've collected some data um, to show kind of how patients are going through the system and the number of referrals. So it'd be wonderful if you could unpack that now. I think Claire's going to show a slide to help you um, go through that. But what was really interesting was I thought it was really interesting you've, you've engaged the ward pharmacists. Anyway, I'll let you pr present your your data, which is really interesting. Um, so yeah, just to to quickly go through this. So as we've incrementally increased our wards um, as the months have have followed through. So January we had 32 referrals. So we, we started at the end of January, um, 11 of which were referred to community pharmacy. And we have a quick rate there at 28 days post discharge of 53.12%. February, we moved on to two other ward areas. So we had 54 referrals, 36 were referred to community pharmacy of which 51.2% was, was successfully quit. Um, 79 in March, 35 referred to community pharmacy and with a 57% quit rate. Mm. Um, and then as you can see in May, um, we, we had 62 referrals that were sent out to, to community pharmacy. Um, so they're, they're starting to increase incrementally as the months roll, roll on. Brilliant. Now it's good to see um, what proportion are going to community pharmacy and around about that 50% quit, quit rate, although that's for all quits, isn't it? Not just community pharmacy. Brilliant. Thank you. I think we're ready to move on to the next case study, but that was brilliant. Thank you very much, Thank Alina. You.